So to aid us further in our decision to use antibiotics for our patients, let's actually look at a recent systematic review that was done. And basically they looked at three big questions. And so those questions were, when do we actually use antibiotics? Second question was, which antibiotic is the most effective? And the third question they wanted to answer is, how long do we use the antibiotic for? So when you look at this review, they actually had 16 previous studies that they used for this systematic review. And the results of this specific review are very useful for us as clinicians. And so I wanna spend a little bit of time going over some of the findings that came from this review. In one study, they looked at patients who presented with a toothache. Some of these patients who had a toothache received antibiotics. Uh, other group of patients that had the toothache did not receive antibiotics. So a good question would be, did antibiotics actually prevent an infection? And the answer from this study was no. And what they found was that in this specific study, they actually showed that antibiotics do not always prevent infections. So the lesson learned here is only use antibiotics when the patient's immune system cannot actually control the bacteria or the infection itself, and they present with the cardinal signs of an infection or systemic involvement. Another finding from this systematic review was they looked at another study where they found that if a patient has an infection, they found that the infection itself resolved more quickly if they extracted the tooth that was causing the infection. So the big takeaway from that specific study was that if you have a very serious infection. Your patient presents with a very serious infection. They have all those cardinal signs of infection. Um, they show that there's potential systemic involvement. It may be a better choice in those situations to consider extracting the tooth instead of attempting to save the tooth and potentially delay the actual recovery time. Now obviously, you know, this is a case by case sort of thing. Some patients will want to save the tooth no matter what the cost. But if you're dealing with a very serious infection, it's more likely that the patient is going to get over that infection quicker if you extract the tooth versus trying to treat it with, say, a pulpectomy, root canal procedure, etc. Two other studies in this review showed that when patients were prescribed antibiotics for a condition that actually justified the antibiotics being used, meaning that they had systemic involvement or they had those cardinal signs of infection, when the patient was given antibiotics and they needed it, they actually recovered more quickly compared to patients who did not receive antibiotics. And the key takeaway here is, in both cases, the proper treatment was rendered. Remember what I said earlier, that the priority for an infection is to address the source of the infection. So if you're doing the proper treatment, you're addressing the source of the infection, what these studies show is that as long as the source is addressed, that antibiotics can actually help your patients recover more quickly when they're used as an adjunct to the proper treatment. Another study in the review showed that when the proper treatment is rendered, you can use many different types of antibiotics and actually have good equal effectiveness with all these different types of antibiotics regarding the resolution of the infection. So really the biggest finding here is the choice of antibiotics actually affects the resolution time more than it affects the actual outcome if the proper treatment is rendered. And again, this finding supports how important it is 
to address the etiology or the source of the infection. You know, that proper treatment by addressing the source of the infection is critical. You know, does the antibiotic matter? Yes, it matters in regards to how quickly does the patient recover if you do the proper treatment. So takeaway is always do the proper treatment and then when it makes sense, use the antibiotic as an adjunct to that proper treatment. So some other studies from this review actually revealed some very interesting statistics. And one of those was um, penicillin still seems to be a very popular first choice drug. And in a couple of the studies they looked at, anywhere from 19 to almost 38% of the microbes that were cultured actually showed that they were resistant to penicillin. Now you would think with up to close to like almost 40% resistance that that could make a huge impact on the treatment of the infection and the outcome of that infection. But what they found was in this specific study, they found that if the proper treatment was rendered, that even though there was a percentage of bacteria involved with this infection that were resistant to penicillin, it did not have any negative effect on the overall outcome of the patient. So this means that even though there are drug resistant strains or antibiotic resistant strains of bacteria present, that doesn't necessarily mean that the treatment will not be successful. Now obviously if you're dealing with a patient that has extreme penicillin resistance or if they have an allergy to penicillin, you really should address this situation by using a different type of antibiotic such as clindamycin or azithromycin as a suitable alternative. I've actually encountered many providers, uh, specifically oral surgeons, who believe that an uh, infection like an abscess should be cultured, that they should actually culture the bacteria and identify what type of bacteria is most common and actually target those bacteria with the antibiotic that is used. And interestingly, in this specific review, there was an article that uh, showed that many of the cultures that do occur, the patients actually discharge from the hospital before the results of those cultures come back. And what they found was is that the patient's given an antibiotic, they're discharged from the hospital, the culture comes back at a later date, but the patient's already down that road of recovery and they're actually having a very good outcome by not using the specific culture. And so, you know, that really just goes to show that culture is not required. However, you should really think about doing a culture for those more serious infections, the ones that are not responding to initial antibiotic therapy, or the ones that are a little bit more life-threatening conditions, where it could be an airway compromise, or it could cause you know, something as serious as death of the patient if the infection is not controlled and controlled well in those situations. But again, the proper treatment has to be rendered. We can't depend solely on the antibiotics themselves. So how long should a patient be on antibiotics? Well, unfortunately, if you look at the literature, there's really no clear answers to this specific question. A couple of studies in this review um, showed that two to three days is more than adequate, and that if you compare two to three days of antibiotics, um, it's very comparable to the patient being on antibiotics for up to seven days. And so it appears that the literature is in support of antibiotic use for only two to three days if the proper treatment and the source of the infection is addressed. All right, so really those are some of the findings from this recent systematic review. And I hope you found these uh, findings useful and helpful in your daily practice. And if you really want more information on this topic, I would encourage you to uh, also visit another part of Evidence-Based Quarterly. 
uh, go back to September 2017, I actually did another review of a separate article and I called that mini lecture, Should I Use Antibiotics for Adonogenic Infections? And it discusses some uh, other aspects of adonogenic infections and it goes in a little bit more detail on specific antibiotics. If you want more information on this, please check that out. And if you um, have any further questions or comments, place them down below or just let me know.